Professor Patzelt, uh, in what way is um, project failure a problem for companies? The project failure, of course, um, is associated with the financial losses um, on, on the one hand. Um, in some industries, these losses can be very substantial. So, for example, in pharmaceuticals, uh, sometimes projects fail in late clinical development stages and companies lose hundreds of millions of euros uh, of their investment. Um, but um, on the other uh, side, and this is what is more the focus of what we are looking at, um, project failure also has a substantial impact uh, in many cases on the employees because it can cause um, uh, substantial negative emotions that uh, make it difficult for the employees to motivate themselves um, to, to move on in the workplace. In what way are team members of a project that failed affected? Well, usually what we observe is that um, right when the project is terminated, um, they are in a situation where they feel they have lost something very important to them. Many of the engineers and uh, of, the, of the scientists involved in, uh, in their projects have spent uh, months and sometimes years on a specific uh, technology that they developed. And uh, then one of a sudden they must uh, either find out that um, it doesn't work as they uh, always believed and all the work was, uh, was for nothing. Or they find out that um, the customer doesn't accept it or they find out that the management uh, terminates the project for a strategic reason and um, all of their um, emotional investment into the project uh, is, is gone. So this is uh, quite a substantial uh, experience for them. And uh, in such a situation, um, a really a uh, negative outcome is that they are not able to, to capture even the learnings from the failure because they just feel bad and they wouldn't sit down and uh, uh, try to understand why the failure uh, in the end um, occur. In other words, there's an, an optimal point of uh, abortion for, uh, for a project. When, when should that uh, point be? Yeah, there is something like an optimal point, but um, when it should be depends, uh, of course, on the nature of the project. Um, what uh, is very clear from our studies is that it is not uh, the best idea just to shut it down immediately once uh, the, the, the failure is, uh, is on the horizon, um, because it just doesn't give people time to cope with the project emotionally, and it doesn't give people time to learn from the project and benefit the organization uh, when it comes to starting new projects. So a couple of weeks or months, depending on the, the the, how important the project is and how central it is to the company's operation can be, can be a good investment to capture the learning and uh, help people gain back their motivation. Finally, what can managers do to help people, uh, you know, after a, uh, to help team members after a project has failed? And managers can be um, very active in helping people get over these negative emotions. For example, uh, in the first place, um, it is important that they communicate that a failure uh, won't be punished. If you work in very innovative sectors, failure is just a likely outcome. If you do something new, you have no blueprint. Uh, so it's always a certain likelihood that the project fails, even if you don't make uh, large mistakes. So creating a culture of accepting failure, um, this is one point that managers can do. But even after the failure has occurred, they can, for instance, uh, provide um, a social environment where it's uh, easy to, um, to talk about the failure and um, to exchange perhaps with other organization members who have had failures. And they can also, um, for example, um, establish some kind of a ritual on, uh, uh, on uh, how to move on after the failure. So some very few, but some companies who we know of, they throw little, what they call perfect failure parties that signals to the team member, well, it has failed, but life goes on. Let's try to get the best out of it and then uh, jump into the next challenge.